If you're using a modern page builder, you might be asking yourself, what do I need this Gutenberg thing for anyway? And we're going to answer that in this video and show you what will happen when you mix Gutenberg with your page builder. We're going to cover all of that in this video. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress tutorial videos for non-techies. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button. Click on the notification bell if you want to know when new videos are uploaded and I'm uploading them pretty regularly on Gutenberg because this is coming and we all want to be as prepared as possible for it. So we're just going to be talking about Gutenberg. Now first let me just say that Gutenberg today is not going to replace your page builder. If you have used Gutenberg in any way, you can you can kind of get the feeling that Gutenberg is not a page builder. In my opinion, it's more of a content builder and that is for just assembling content much like you would for a blog post where you can put your images in there, different columns, you can have quotes, just basic things like that to build out nice content. But what will most likely happen in the next 12 months, maybe be a year and a half, you're going to see theme developers really going in deep on Gutenberg and making it so that you could build home pages and more more structured full pages versus just content using Gutenberg. And also there has been talk of using Gutenberg and the Gutenberg interface to create your entire website, your headers, your footers, and all of that. But that is way, way, way down in the future. We're talking years. Today we're using Gutenberg to build content and we'll use a page builder to build complex page layouts. So let's go ahead and take a look on this site right here. If I go to plugins, you're going to see, my gosh, I have all the major plugins or page builders in here. I've got Beaver Builder, I've got Brizzy, I've got Divi, I've got Elementor, and down here, I have Thrive Architect. Now, obviously, there are other page builders out there. Now, the way that the each page builder works with Gutenberg is a little different, and you're going to see them all in this video. But I'm going to, at the end of this give, video, give you some advice on how best to use your page builder and your and Gutenberg in the same environment. So let's go ahead and first test out Beaver Builder. I'll activate it and then jump on into Pages. Okay, you can see down here, Beaver Builder is now activated. Now there's this drop down arrow here and you'll see that Beaver Builder does not give us an option here to create a new page with Beaver Builder. So what we would do is click on Gutenberg and this will allow us to create a new page with Gutenberg. We'll give it a title and then what we'll do is if we want to use Beaver Builder on this particular page or post whatever you're creating, then you would click launch Beaver Builder right here. So I've gone ahead and given this a title, I'm going to go ahead and click on publish. I'm going to click on publish again. It's behind the video. Sorry about that. I'm going to click on launch Beaver Builder and then it's just going to push me ahead into the Beaver Builder interface and it's pulling up right here. So let me just go ahead and get out of this. And now that I've gotten back into the editor, you can see right here it says Beaver Builder is currently active for this page and I can get back into Beaver Builder by clicking on launch Beaver Builder. So this is how it's done with Beaver Builder. Okay, so now what I've done is disabled Beaver Builder and activated Brizzy. And here is Brizzy right here. It's actually breezy. I'm always going to pronounce that wrong. You can see it's activated. Now, when I go to the drop down for breezy, you can see I have an option here. However, it's not working right now, and that's probably because they haven't fully completed their Gutenberg integration. So you can see right here, it will take you to that page, which is not where you want to go. And also, if you go add new and go into Gutenberg, there's no options here to create the the page in breezy. So breezy's got a little bit of work to do, but I'm sure they already have a plan and they're already on top of it. Okay, now I've gone ahead and activated the Divi Builder and you can see it's active right here. And so when I go to the drop down, there's an option for Divi, Gutenberg, and the Classic Editor. So when I click on Divi, it's going to go ahead and jump me straight on into the Divi Builder interface so I could go ahead and start building out this page if I want. So let's go ahead and pull this up and then save it and see what we're left with. Actually here, let's start building. Okay, we have this. I'm just gonna click on start building. Let's get out of here because I don't want any of this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click on save. Actually, I'll just click on publish right here on the bottom right. 
and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when you're in the back end of the post. So now if I click on edit page and this is going to get me out of the Divi Builder, this is what that page is going to look like. So this is what happens when you, instead of creating a Gutenberg page first and just go straight into your page builder, uh, you're going to have to come back in here and choose an actual title for your page and then fix the permalink or the slug if you needed to. But in the future, you would just come back into the Gutenberg interface and click on launch Divi Builder and it will take you right back into Divi. I like the visual way that Divi did this and the way that they implemented it. Okay, now I have Elementor installed and activated and we go to the drop down, we have Elementor. So I can do the same thing I just did with Divi. If I click on Elementor, it's just gonna jump me straight on into Elementor. And after I'm done creating my page in Elementor, I'm going to need to go back to the edit page to add a page title, add any specific settings, and also go ahead and fix the slug. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just go ahead and click on publish. And then I'm going to exit. I'm going to go here and exit the dashboard. It's going to take me right back to that page. And this is what it looks like when you get into a page that was built with Elementor, but you started off here in Gutenberg. So right here, if I wanted to go back to the WordPress editor, I can click this and do that. I like that that is there. You didn't see that with Divi. Uh, and then right here, if I wanted to get back in Elementor, I'd click here. Right here, you're going to want to put your page title in. And then you see right here, you're going to want to click on edit to edit that permalink which is going to be the link to this page or this post that you have created okay so now i have thrive architect installed and activated and we don't get the option for thrive architect here in the drop down which is fine so i'm going to go ahead and click on gutenberg and then when we're in here we could go ahead and give it a title save it and then click right here where it says launch thrive architect okay i've put my title in i'm going to go ahead i'm going to publish this and then I'll go ahead and click on Launch Thrive Architect. It'll jump us right on into Thrive Architect. I'm gonna save it in Thrive Architect and get back into Gutenberg just to see what it looks like. Okay, here I am inside. I'll click on Save and it will just take a moment to save. And then I'll click on the dots here, Exit Thrive Architect. It's gonna put me back into, well, the page itself. I'll click back into Edit Page. And you can see this is what it now looks like when you're using Thrive Architect. You have this area right here. And I like that they that it does this. So I know not to add content to Gutenberg right here. It's a Thrive Architect page. Now, after trying this process of creating a new page and then using it with a page builder, right now, if you're familiar with me, you know I'm using Elementor mostly on most of my sites. So let me go ahead and activate Elementor. Now, here's my best piece of advice to you if you're gonna go and create a new page or post and you want to create it with your page builder even if you go to this drop down and there's an option for your page builders name I would suggest not doing that and always clicking on Gutenberg and here's why it's very easy to click on Elementor you create your page and you save it and then you forget to go in there and change the page title and then you also have to go in there and change the slug it's a little bit of a pain if you ask me so I think it's better Better to just start your page with Gutenberg every single time and you will have an option to then use your page builder after you give it a title you choose your permalink or just the one that's auto generated and then jump in using your page builder so that is these modern page builders and how we're going to be using it very soon in Gutenberg and they all do it a little differently but I think that Gutenberg really has a long way to go before it's going to be able to compete with what you're able to do with any of these modern page builders where you're going to be able to have advanced layout configurations and options and design options. Gutenberg just doesn't have that right now and that's okay. I'm sure they're working on that and that's the big master plan but it's going to be a long time before it gets there. So if you're building a website today or you're planning to build a website later this year or next year you're absolutely going to 
want to choose to go the route of using one of these page builders. I do have links to all of them down below there. Most of them have free versions and they also have paid versions. I have links to all of it down below. But I don't want you to say, oh, Gutenberg's coming. Should I wait? Because you never want to wait when you have an idea of something you're trying to implement. You never want to wait. You want to implement it as fast as humanly possible using the tools that are available today. Think about it this way. It's usually, in my experience, I usually swap my website out and update it or do some major overhaul every two years. So when Gutenberg is able to compete with the page builder in two or three years, then maybe at that time you would use Gutenberg. But today, for creating advanced page layouts, you're ha gonna have to use a page builder in order to, uh, to accomplish that and then save Gutenberg for blog posts or just content-based pages where you might want an advanced content layout. So anyways, that's all that I have for you in this video. If you've found some value in it, consider giving the video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to know when I upload new videos. If you have anything to add to the conversation, there's a comment section down below. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.